Dr. Tracy all the way is back and today we're talking about how to motivate your kids when they're in school and it's interesting because in one of these studies basically it was this you can do it <laughs> but can you really so it's really how to craft that message and communicate to your kids so welcome back to River City Live thank you for having me I thought that study was fascinating because we did something very similar with a local school in Jacksonville as well where we looked at this idea of growth mindset that kind of you can do it you know and some researchers call that blind optimism as well and we found that that approach does not actually improve grades at all so you're lying to your children <laughs> you can't do it so back down <laughs> exactly does it, does it put extra pressure on their them does it make it even worse for them I think that the study is really nuances so another study done with over 12,000 students in the US found that it's fine to motivate them by saying you can do it, but if the school environment isn't creating an environment that is challenging and motivating, that kind of, hey, pep talk, you can do it, is just going to not bear any fruition. So then what do we do? Mm -hmm. there, are, there are a couple of things that we can do. The first thing is that we need to praise the effort and not the person. So instead of saying, hey, buddy, you're awesome, keep going, actually say that if you work hard, you can do it. So it shifts the focus from, I'm great, you know, I can do this, to um, actually saying, if I work hard, then I'm actually going to see the results. So in a way, you're actually praising the effort. Correct. Right? And I think that makes a lot of sense. Right. And, you know, we're talking about school, but also with, like, sports and other things. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm proud of you for the hard work that you did. Exactly. Maybe it doesn't translate onto the field, but maybe that's a way to celebrate the child. That's right. And that's another key study that was done longitudinally. So they looked at process versus praise. And again, it's this understanding that your effort has to be cumulative. It's not just a single, hey, I did my homework tonight, I should get an A in my grades right now. That you have to actually show that the process is making a difference. And that's also a shift in focus. So sometimes in your process you may fail, you may not be successful, but you still have to keep putting forth the effort over a longer period of time. And then what about when a, a child comes to you and they have some lofty goal? And they say, you know what, this is the year I'm running for student council president or I'm going to get all straight A's. What do you say to them to encourage them, but at the same time not set up these crazy expectations? And that is such a great question. And it's something that affects us as adults, not just children. And my response is be defensive. And it's what psychologists call defensive pessimism, which is the antidote to this blind optimism. Like, hey, you can do it. And I think it's just cultivating the sense of realism and sometimes we want to be able to build ourselves up right. our children up so much that we forget to actually set realistic expectations so basically if somebody has like a, a lofty goal then really what you're trying to do is reverse engineer it okay so how do we get there yes. that's basically what you're saying right because i feel like when i was growing up my parents would shoot down all that <laughs> stuff like they were like real about it mm -hmm. and then like i would overcome those barriers mm -hmm. you know um if anything it motivated me but everybody's a little bit different mm -hmm. and i feel like with my kids if they do have a goal then it's like it's great to set for that, but they have to understand, again, the body of work, the journey that mm -hmm. you have to be willing to put into to get to that point. Yeah, absolutely. And that's such a critical point because a lot of times with this blind optimism, we don't prepare. Right. And you see this with entrepreneurs. You see that with retirement funds. You think, you know what, it's going to be fine. And so those kinds of people with this overly optimistic approach don't plan. And so if you have a lofty goal, you may think, yeah, of course I can do it. I'm awesome. People love me. They're going to vote for me without actually planning and thinking about, well, what are ways in which this can go wrong? And like you said, Mark, how can I circumvent that? How can I address that on the front end instead of the back end? So there has to be a way I'm taking it as you have to be able to say, you can do everything within your control. And as long as it's in your control, mm -hmm. you absolutely can do this if you make it happen, you know there might be a chance that some things are not within our control, yeah. but if right. things go the way we would like them to, mm -hmm. I know you'll do your best. So my four-year-old, he wants to be a superhero. We just have to figure out a way to do that. <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to go about exactly, exactly. <laughs> Buy him a cape. Maybe he gets bit by a spider that gives him powers. I don't know. We're going to workshop this. We just got to figure out the process on how to get exactly. there. That's exactly. That's what you're saying. Yeah, get him jumping. You know, Did I just miss everything you just said? Yeah. No, well, somewhere along the way, somebody gave you exactly the right guidance and motivation, Tracy, because you're so accomplished and you can Thank read you. more about everything Tracy's involved in and learn more about the subjects she covers here on TracyAlloway.com. Thank you. And right Thank now you. we're going to send it over to Rance.